I am here to talk to you about um, how art and architecture have come together in my work. So this is where I work now at the BMA, and that on the right is where I learned to work, my grad school, SciArc, and that's my old desk right there. And we're gonna talk about a lot of projects that I've done over the past few years, some art, some architecture, some technology. This is Studio 1452, we did this for the KMS Hair Care Salon, and what they really needed from us was uh, some, some graphics that could be changed out very quickly, because they were doing you know, multiple, multiple campaigns a year. So we ran this continuous datum through the space, which became everything that we needed to be. Art, technology, architecture, um, still images. And a lot of those images started to populate across those different media. So some of the same imagery that you could be seeing in your still imagery would migrate into the digital space and actually back into the physical space of the museum. So we're always looking at our projects for ways to begin to tie those things together so that you're not slapping a screen in a piece of architecture, which we do way too much much of the time. This was a project that we did for the Madden Library in Fresno, California. Uh, this is 5,000 plus hours of continuous video of a master basket weaver weaving a basket um, projected onto the screen on the side of this building. It goes continuously 24-7 and becomes like the clock for the building. Uh, at the time that we did this, this was like the largest project Media Mesh had done in North America. Um, and it's, it's a project that we're very, very proud of. We also did that as an LCD uh, flat panel display inside of the building, and this the whole process of this becoming something thoroughly integrated into the architectural space. Th this, the building was built around this piece, and I think that's an incredibly important thing to think about how those things get integrated. This is a piece that we did uh, in Salt Lake City for the, the Museum of Natural History, and we were looking at uh, producing a sort of faceted wall onto which we are projecting uh, video of the Utah landscape, as well as real-time data visualization of the weather. Uh, and we've sandblasted some of those panels with the topography of the landscape. So it's both reflecting you as you're seeing imagery in it. So again, how do we collapse this idea of the here of physical space and the now of digital space? This is a system diagram for those of you who like to know those things. So you can take a picture of that, how, how it got made. Um, you know, but in, in all of these projects, I think what we're really thinking about is this idea of here and now. And this is how the piece turned out, which I thought was really quite lovely. So those dark patches that you're seeing there are actually um, highly polished mirror that has been sandblasted. So when a visitor stands in front of this, they're seeing the landscape as well as seeing themselves. So then I moved to the BMA, and the first project that I did there was BMA Go Mobile. Uh, it's a mobile, it's a mobile uh, a website that we use for our in-gallery interpretation. And we could all have the debate about mobile, about you know, website versus app, but one of the things I found interesting about it, it's six years ago now, is really thinking about the way that it's helped us think about bringing our online collection into the museum space and back out of it again. And looking at these as very, very fluid boundaries is something that I think is incredibly important. This is an education space that we did called the Big Table. One designer, one year, one big idea in art. You're looking at the second iteration of it here where we, uh, well, subjected our audiences to minimalism. So for, for an entire year, uh, done by the wonderful designers Ellen Lupton and Abbott Miller, who had the idea of putting this relentless grid over the space. And this idea of this relentless physical grid was incredibly important to them. But we have, a, we have got a flat screen in the middle of that space. What are we gonna do? We're gonna continue the grid through the flat screen. Right? And so this is this very interesting idea of how do you begin to collapse these boundaries so what you're feeling spatially and haptically and in your body is something that's being mirrored and echoed in that digital space. So there's a reciprocity between these things. And this is a project very near and dear to my heart for the Imagining Home exhibition, a three-year cross-collection exhibition that we launched in our uh, newly uh, renovated Joseph Education Center. Uh, this was a, a project that really grew out of a need that visitors were expressing to us and we have this lovely little nook area you have a little iPad uh, a, a small prompt on the iPad where we ask you um, what is home to you home is fill in the blank well over three years we had 34,000 people fill in the blank and one of the things that was extraordinarily important about this project is that 
you know, we had the whole, do you moderate it, do you not moderate it, do you have a moderation queue? No, we decided that what we we're gonna do is have visitors actually just have that moment with their response and actually see in physical real time and space the museum hearing and validating them. Then it went into a moderation queue. And that is all I have time for. <laughs>